the optical rainbow effect appears in scattering of light in the limiting case of small wave wavelengths. We all know about that effect. When in the scattering process we have sunlight and water droplets in the atmosphere, one calls the effect the meteorological rainbow effect. The first explanation of uh, the effect happened in the 4th century BC and Aristotle was the one to try to study it. His explanation was wrong, but anyway, he was the first one to try to explain the effect. But the satisfactory quantitative theory of the effect did not come between the 20th century, believe it or not, in 1969, not before that. In the beginning of the 50s, an effect analogous to the meteorological rainbow effect was first predicted and then about 10 years after that observed experimentally. So far, the rainbows have been discovered in the scattering of nuclei by nuclei, in the scattering of atoms from crystal surfaces, and in ion transmission through crystal channels. We shall be talking here about the meteorological rainbow effect and about the rainbow effect in ion transmission through crystal channels, which has been named the crystal rainbow effect. Our main aim is to demonstrate that these phenomena are complex. This is a picture of the meteorological rainbow effect. The effect has more components, the primary, the secondary, and the supernumerary rainbows. The primary rainbow, this is this rainbow, is a bright circular bow seen in the sky at an angle of about 42 degrees relative to the horizon. The secondary rainbow is another bright bow appearing in the sky on the outer side of the primary rainbow but at the angle of 50 degrees relative to the horizon. The region between the primary and secondary rainbow is dark. The supernumerary rainbows appear on the inner side of the primary rainbow, you see them, a number of, a number of hardly visible bows. These are the supernumerary rainbows. The first explanation of the meteorological rainbow effect was given by Descartes, but he was followed an experiment performed by Theodoric of Freiburg in the beginning of the 14th century. This is a scheme of the process. This is a water droplet. This is one of the incoming rays. B denotes the so-called impact parameter. It gives you the position of the incoming ray, in the initial position of the incoming ray on the water droplet boundary. Descartes calculated all possible outcoming uh, rays, light rays, and classified them in a very simple way. Number one is a ray directly reflected. Number two is a ray that went through the droplet without any reflection. Number three is the ray with, which had inside the droplet one reflection. Number four, the ray with two reflections and so on. That classification was done, as I have said, by Descartes. Now, let us see the explanation of all that. This is the called, called deflection function. It gives you the scattering angle of the light ray as a function of the impact parameter. This is the impact parameter, and the scattering angle for the rays of class 3 is this angle. For the class from, cla uh, from class, uh, rays from class 4 is this one. If you see those dependencies, you will see that for the rays from class 3, there is a minimum here. And for the rays from class 4, a maximum here. This point 
as well as this point, is a point of accumulation of light. That was the discovery. And the angles are 100 and 138 degrees and 130 degrees. These are the scattering angles, but the corresponding angles relative to the horizon were 40 degrees, 42 degrees, and 50 degrees. That was the discovery. Those were the primary and secondary rainbow. This is the bright side of the primary rainbow. This is the dark side. In the case of secondary rainbow, this is the bright side, and this is the dark side. He also noticed that in between the two accumulation points, there was no rays. And that was the Alexander's Dark Bend, the region named after Alexander the Aphrodisias. He was the first one to observe that in, uh, the, in, the, in the fourth century. Descartes also noticed that the intensity of light, this is the intensity of light versus the scattering angle that when you, are, when you go towards the rainbow angle, the intensity goes to infinity. And this is the explanation. This is the bright side. At the boundary, the intensity goes to infinity and then drops to zero. This is the beginning of the Alexander's dark, dark band. The same explanation is valid for the secondary rainbow. We all know, we all have seen many times that a rainbow consists of a number of rows a number of bows of different colors, from purple to red. What is the origin of that? Newton was the one to explain that. That can be attributed to the dispersion of light. But if the light is monochromatic, for example, red, the whole rainbow will stay there, but it will be red. Thus, the essential characteristic of a meteorological rainbow is not colors but an abrupt change of the intensity of scattered light across the rainbow angle, rather than the appearance, as I have said, of the bows of different colors. However, you can see clearly in this figure that two values of the impact parameter gives one value of the scattering angle, and the same thing for the secondary rainbow one impact parameter, second, the first, the second, and one scattering angle. What does this mean? You have two rays at one angle. You are the observer, you see the two rays at one angle. But that means that these rays can interfere. This is something new. And that's how Young and later Airy explained the supernumerary rainbows. You see here the calculation of the Airy. Instead of this, Descartes' dependence, you have the primary rainbow and this, the first supernumerary rainbow. This was a very clear explanation. In parallel to that, it has been uh, determined that the abrupt change of the intensity of light scattered from above a droplet in the vicinity of this angle, it is very abrupt, but it can be modeled by catastrophe theory. Catastrophe theory is a general theory of models. That's why one may say that the rainbow effect is a catastrophic event. But as I have said, in this case, two rays can interfere. This is something you, you have at the exit more than at the entrance. This means that the supernumerary rainbow effect is a gestalt or synergistic or emergent effect, and that makes the effect complex. Carlos, listening? Yes. <laughs> Complexity means that something emerges, something you do not expect. This is a fantastic picture. I guess you have never seen anything like that. This is the full rainbow. You've seen that? To see that, what is the situation? The observer is in an airplane, the droplets are in front, and the sun is just behind. That's why you see the whole rainbow. You always, when you are on the earth, you see a part of it. This is a fantastic picture. You see the primary rainbow, the secondary rainbow, the Alexander dark band, and also, to a certain extent, you see the supernumerary rainbows. This is a complicated effect 
but what make it, makes it complex is the supernumerary rainbows. The primary and secondary rainbows are complicated, but not complex. Let us now move to the crystal rainbows. This is a channel of a crystal. There are many strings around these four in a real crystal. These four atomic strings, one, two, three, four, define a crystal channel. You can uh, enter that channel with charged particles, for example, protons or another ions. We, uh, we, we discovered this effect in 1986 in the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This is the impact parameter of the ion. This is the initial position of the ion in this entrance plane. This is the scattering angle. And the axes are vertical, horizontal, and longitudinal. There will be only two formulas. Do not be afraid. The ion differential transmission cross-section sigma being a variable determining the intensity of scattered light is given by this very simple expression. J, 1 over J, J is a complicated function of the partial derivatives of theta x and theta y. These are the vertical and horizontal components of the scattering angle. That is what we measure. We measure theta x and theta y, and we also measure sigma, intensity. We saw, and that was our discovery, that J, sorry, that J can be zero. If J is zero, sigma goes to infinity. This is a rainbow. And for the first time, we, we, we predicted that theoretically. And the experimental observation came very soon after that in the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in 1986 and 1984. And then after that, after many years in the at the National University of Singapore in the period of from 2011 to 2014. But the crucial variable here, J, we have found that can be split into two parts. The first part is a sum of terms describing the ion scattering from the individual atomic strings, one, two, three, four. While this term, the second one, is a sum of terms describing the coupling between the pairs of at atomic strings, as seen by the ion. The ion is an observer. It comes into the crystal and gives, brings the information out of it. Thus, the equation J equals zero, or sigma goes to infinity, defines the rainbow line in the impact parameter plane, in this plane, and in the scattering angle plane. The observation is done in the scattering angle plane. You cannot measure this line. Let us now give you a concrete example. The incoming particles are protons. The energy is seven mega electron volts. That means that uh, an ion can easily go through a thin, a thin or very thin crystal. It is a very special channel orientation of the crystal and the thickness is 140 nanometer. These are the four atomic strings and this is the rainbow line in the impact parameter plane. You'll see what does that mean. If you follow the dependence of the intensity of scattered light across this line, you see two peaks to maxima, to very high maxima, to infinities here. And these two points correspond to these two points. Now, these are the rainbow lines, the rainbow points belonging to this rainbow line. But if you cancel term J prime, the interference term, you will then obtain only this line. It clearly tells you that the rainbow effect is a consequence of coupling between the uh, atomic strings, between uh, uh, the consequence of interference of the atomic strings. In the case of meteorological rainbows, the rays were interfering. But here, the contributions of the atomic strings interfere. But this is interference again. And as a result, this is a gestalt, synergistic, or emergent effect. Again, the crystal rainbows are complex phenomena. This is uh, the rainbow line in the, in the observation space, four atomic strings again. This is the rainbow line. This is the bright side of the rainbow, and this is the dark side of the rainbow. 
It is given in white here, it should be black, but you'll see, so you'll see that in the next uh, figure. We have demonstrated in 1987 that this effect can also be modeled very successfully by catastrophe theory, and that's why we call it a catastrophic effect. This is the calculated rainbow, the rainbow line in the space in which you measure the bright side and the dark side. Now, a result of a sequence of high resolution measurements with the focused proton microbeams of energy of 2, 1.5, 1.0, and 0.7 MeV directed into, into the same channel. This is the same channel, but the energy is different. The energy here is 7 MeV, and here is as it is written here. The experiment was performed at the National University of Singapore, but not analyzed in the Vincha Institute of Nuclear Sciences. That was the place I was working in the whole my life. You see clearly, this is the rainbow line, like here. This is the bright side of the inner rainbow. This is the dark side of the inner rainbow. But this region is the dark, bright, bright side of the second rainbow, and the dark side is here. The similar situation is with uh, the results for other energies. You see that with energy, the situation changes. The rainbow lines change. But the comparison of the experiment, the experiment is yellow and the theoretical calculation is red, tells you that the rainbows appear as the skeletons of the distribution. We have compared, of course, the details of all this and the uh, comparison gives us a perfect coincidence. This is the final confirmation of the effect. This was a high technology experiment. The thickness of the crystal is uh, 55 nanometers. That means that each atomic row has 110 atoms. This is nanoscience. And the incoming beam, the di diameter is one micrometer. And one micrometer is one thousand times smaller than one millimeter. This is one millimeter. Can you imagine a beam one thousand times smaller than this? And the guys there did that. They created the crystal. They uh, were preparing that experiment for about five years. The crystal, to prepare the crystal, to prepare the beam, and to register that with a very special technique. Now, I have described briefly the meteorological rainbow effect and the crystal rainbow effect. The former effect is macroscopic and the latter effect is microscopic. In the first, in the primary, in the former case, the projectiles with light, photons, and the target was a water droplet. In the latter case, the projectiles with proton and uh, the, the target a crystal. But in both cases, with them, the cases are different but both of them are catastrophic and complex. Now, a message to other researchers in the field. We have shown that a complex phenomena can be well modeled, accurately modeled, and fully understood. This is a message to other people in the field. The field is complex systems, especially to those researchers in the field of social sciences. Do not be afraid we understand that, we can understand that. What we need is the following, to understand the components totally and to try to model the interaction or the connection between that. That might give a result. Thus, please follow the results in physics and in other natural sciences. This is a message to social scientists, to Carlos, for example. <laughs> but a result may come. You cannot apply that directly. Follow the results and if appropriate, you may take an idea from that. Thank you very much.